Chapter 5, Section 6, we are finding the zeros of the function and graphing the polynomials. First, we're going to find the zeros of y is equal to x times x minus 6. So we're going to treat this as two separate equations. So we're going to put this x all by itself equal to 0 and wow. this x minus 6 equal to 0. No, just stating fact. And now we solve the two equations. So x is equal to 0 is already solved. Can't do anything with that one. How would we solve the right equation? Add 6 to both sides, so we get x is equal to 6. So our two answers are x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 6. We have two answers. So we have an answer for each x. So that's how we get two answers. So, good question. So this is finding the zeros. So we're finding when y is equal to 0. That's what finding the zeros means. Um, and how does x equal 0? Wouldn't it be more like multiplied? So when this x is 0, if we plugged, so let's write a function down here. So we have y is equal to x times x minus 6. Guys, stop talking. <coughs> and we make, Jaylene, we make this x a 0. Anything, and this x could be a 0 too, right? We, we're plugging in 0 for x. So we have y is equal to 0 times negative 6. What's 0 times negative 6? Seven. 0. So when x is 0, y is 0. Wait, so why is it 0? Why is it x 0? So we set each part of this equation equal to 0. So this is our first part here. And this is our second part here. Okay. So we're just setting each part equal to 0. Because this x was all by itself, so we just set the first part, which was just x, so just x, equal to 0. Uh, so when x is by itself, yes. Let's go to the next example. So our two parts of this equation are x plus 4 and x minus 5. So our two equations are going to be x plus 4 is equal to 0 and x minus 5 is equal to 0. So how do we solve for x in our first one? <coughs> Subtract 4. So what are we going to get for x? x is equal to negative 4. And what about our second one? Add 5. So x is equal to 5. Perfect. So these are two answers. Guys, remember we did this before, but the first step we had to do was factor, and then we set them equal to 0. But now it's already factored for us. So we just have to set the two parts equal to 0. Ready for the next example? Yes. Okay, we're doing the same thing here, but we have three parts now. So what's our first equation going to be, Dom? So we set the first part equal to 0. x plus 12 is equal to 0. Dom, what's our second equation going to be? X minus is equal to? Zero. Zero. Perfect. And then what's our third equation? X minus 7 is equal to? Zero. Zero. So we're going to get three answers for X. So we get X is equal to? Negative 12. Negative 12. X is equal to? Nine. And X is equal to? Seven. Perfect. So these are zeros of the function. Okay, so these are our three answers. Any questions on this part? Nope, okay, next part. So we need to find the zeros and graph. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before, and we're gonna set up our two equations. So we have two parts of this, so we're gonna set up two equations. Don, what's our first equation gonna be? x minus 1 is equal to 0. And what's our second equation? x plus 2 is equal to 0. So what do we get for x in the first one? 
Dom? X is equal to 1. And Dom, what about the second one? X is equal to negative 2. So we're going to go on our x-axis and graph those points. So we're going to graph when x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2. So we're going to go on our x-axis, find the point 1. So we're just going to go to the right 1, and then we're going to go to the left 2. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So we're finding the zero. So when y is equal to zero, x is going to be equal to 1, and x is going to be equal to negative 2. So those are two points first. Next, we're going to count how many x's we have in our equation. So, Kirvin, how many x's do we have in our original equation? Uh, two. two. We have one x there and another one there. Are they both positive? Yeah, so we're going to have a positive x squared. What do we know the end behavior of an x squared graph is? A positive x squared graph. Parabola. It's a parabola, but what's their end behavior? Is it up and up, up and down, down and down, down and up? Remember, it's even, so they're going to go in the same direction. Up and up. So our end behavior is going to go up and up. So we're going to go on our two dots. And this is going to be up, and this is going to be up. And then we're just going to connect them there. So that's a rough sketch of what this graph would look like. How do you know, like, um, like how to like, where, you, where you do the little So on our graph, we need to go up, so this way. And we need to go up. And then we're just going to cross. So it crosses the x-axis, right? So we just cross this way. We're not going to go like this way. That wouldn't be a consecutive graph. No, yeah, but like, how do you know where to like, end the loop? Like, you know, like, it could be, so it could look like this. It could also look like this. We don't know exactly, so this is just like a rough sketch of it. Okay. The important parts here are the zeros. So where it crosses and the end behavior, so up and up. So these are the important parts. Why is it up and up again? Because we have two x's, so it's x squared, and none of the x's are negative, so it's positive. So that's what gives us the up and up. Ready for the next one? Oh, you mean the x's in the problem? Yes. Okay, so what are two equations we're going to make here? x minus 2 is equal to 0 and x plus 9 is equal to 0. So what do we get for our x in the first equation? x equals 2. And what about the second? x is equal to negative 9. So we're going to go to our graph, and on the x-axis, we're going to put a point at 2 and a point at negative 9. Okay, so we're going to put a point at 2 and a point, a point at 2, and a point at negative 9. Now we're going to count how many x's we have. Kervin, how many x's do we have here? 2. We have two x's in our original equation. So we have an x squared. Are both these x's positive? Yes. Like, just the physical x's here are both positive. Neither one has a negative sign in front. Oh, because we solved it and it was, uh, one of them was negative 9, so that's what we That doesn't count. So we're just talking about the physical x in our original equation, if there's any negatives or positives. So there's no negatives, so they're both positive. So what would the end behavior of an x squared graph look like? Up and up. Remember, it's even, so they go the same direction, and it's positive, so they go up and up. So we put our end behaviors. What do you mean by when you say there's no negatives? Um, like I mean, okay. 
I'll go over that. So if we had like a negative x here, yeah. then, it would be then it would be negative. Oh, okay, okay. Right. So I mean like in the original equation, okay. both of these x's don't have a negative in front of it, so, so they're positive. Only, so I only, you only care about the x's, not the, the... Right, I only care about the x's. Yeah, yeah. You don't even have to worry about the other numbers from our graph. <laughs> okay, one at a time. What's the x squared? Okay, so the x squared is I'm just talking about how many x's we have. So we have two x's, so it's an x squared graph. Wait, so, so, okay. So we're going to find what x equals to? Like, yes. x equals to zero. So, so that's right. Two and then negative nine. And then from here, where do you go? So then we need to find out our end behavior. Which is x, right? Which is, so since we have two x's, so it's an x squared graph, it's going to be up and up. So we have up and up at our two points. And if, if like the first x was negative, it would have to loop, right? Or if the first x was negative, then it would be down and down. Okay. And then we just connect the graph there. All right, so now we need to find what our x equals. So we need to find the zero. So we set this equal to zero, this equal to zero, and this equal to zero. So what's our first equation? x equals 0. What's our second one? x plus 5 is equal to 0. And our third? x minus 8 is equal to 0. So x plus 5 is equal to 0. What do we get for x? x is equal to negative 5. And in our last one, x minus 8 is equal to 0. x is equal to 8. So now we take these three points that we have and we put them on the graph. So we go to x is equal to 0 here, x is equal to negative 5, and x is equal to 8. So they're positive, but they're off, so it's up down. So it's positive, and we have three x's, right? We have 1, 2, 3, so it's an odd number. So odd means that they're going in opposite directions, and positive means that it's going to end going up. So we're going to end going up. And where are we gonna, how are we going to start? Down. 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 So then we just, it's like connecting the dots. You just go through the dots. OK, what are our three equations we're going to have here? X plus 1 is equal to? Zero. What's the next one? X minus 2 is equal to 0. And? X minus 3 is equal to 0. OK, so now we're solving the first equation. What do we get for x? Zero. Negative 1. What about the second one? Positive 2. And the third one? Positive 3. OK, so now we need to take these three points and put them on the graph. So we have? A negative one, a two, and a three. So how many x's do we have in this original equation here? Three. three. So we have x cubed. Are all of these x's here, do any of them have a negative in front of it? No. No, so they're all positive. So how is this graph going to end on the right side? It's going to end going up, and the odd tells us that they go in opposite directions, so how is it going to start? Down. Down. So if it ends, so we're taking the last dot on the right, and we're going to put an arrow going up. And then in our first dot, we're going to put an arrow going down. And then we just need to go through the dots. Okay, so if we're on the bottom part of the dot, we need to go to the top. From the top, we go to the bottom. It's connecting the dots. You just go through, through, and through. If it was a negative odd, then it would be up and then down. Which means that like, if the x was negative? Yes. If there was like a negative in here. Why is it up and down? It's down and then up. Yeah. Because it's odd. Odd means they go in different directions. So one has to go up, one has to go down. Since it's positive, it's going to end going up. Any so one that's it, positive is going to end going up. So if it, if it was so x um, cubed, it'd be 
up and then down? If it were negative. If it were negative, it would be the opposite. So it would be up and then down. How do you make that negative just x? If there was like a negative in front of the x here. Mm, okay. Like a negative there. We'll do an example from the homework that has a negative. All right, any other questions? No, ma'am. All right, let's open up the homework, and I'll do a couple from there.